Good morning. This morning's gospel reading is one of those <clears throat> readings that just fascinate us if you put yourself in the middle of the story. It's the story of Jesus' transfiguration found in Mark 9 verses 2 through 9. And in that story, we see where Jesus took with him three of his disciples, Peter, James, and John, and took them up on a mountain. And while they were up there, it says that Jesus was transfigured before them. And it also says that while that transfiguration was taking place, Jesus was talking with Moses and Elijah. What a scene that had to be. Jesus talking with Moses, who I'm sure represented the law, God's law, and Elijah, who represented the prophets. And here was Jesus, God himself, the redeemer of mankind, meeting with the law and the prophets and actually fulfilling the law of the prophets. And it says that he talked with Moses and Elijah. Wonder what he talked about. Luke gives us a clue because we understand that Jesus talked with Moses and Elijah about his death, his resurrection, and his ascension, and through that work would bring salvation as an open door to all of mankind. Peter, watching all of this, was just overwhelmed, and he even went as far to say, oh Lord, it is good for us to be here, and he just wanted to build a tent and hang out there on the mountain, and we like to do that with mountaintop experiences. And thank God for those mountaintop experiences. But I want to draw us attention, draw our attention this morning to the word transfigured. In our gospel reading, it says very clearly, there he was transfigured before them. Other versions may use the word transformed. Other versions I have even seen, they, they use, he changed. The word transfigured comes from the word, the Greek word, metamorphomai. And I'm sure you're probably familiar with what our English word is that derives from that word. Metamorphomai, it refers to a change of outward expression that is reflective of the inner true nature. Eugene Peterson put it this way in the message. He said, his appearance changed from the inside out. Our word that we are familiar with is metamorphosis. And that is the process of change of where a cocoon can change from the inside out and develop into this beautiful butterfly. Jesus was transfigured before them. His usual mode of expression, at least to his disciples, was that of a servant. They were used to seeing Jesus as a servant. In fact, it says in Matthew 20, 28, that the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. His disciples were used to seeing this 100% man side of Jesus as he ministered to people as a servant. But he was also 100% God at the same time. His outward expression at that moment 
chains to show his inner divine nature. I love what it says in Philippians 2. It says that who, and it's talking about Jesus, who being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used for his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness. Jesus was 100% man and at the same time 100% God. And at that moment, on that Mount of Transfiguration, the disciples got to see the inner Jesus, the real Jesus, the inner true nature of Jesus as he talked with Moses and Elijah. And that's when Peter says, oh, Rabbi, it is so good to be here. But that wasn't the end of the story because it went on to say in Mark that after this exchange, as they witnessed Jesus talking with Moses and Elijah, it says, then God spoke from heaven and says, this is my son. Listen to him. I can understand how Peter must have felt because I would have been blown away at that point. They got to see a transformation of Jesus, who he was. Jesus is the perfect example. And the Bible also wants us to be transformed. I want to talk to you a few minutes about our transformation. That change, that metamorphomai, where we are changed into God wants us to be. Transformation, our transformation, begins when we are saved. It begins when we believe in Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. And that is a, the beginning of a process. It says in 2 Corinthians 5.17, in Christ we are made a new creation. God changes us when we become a new creation. Our inner man is changed by the power of the Holy Spirit. And when we place our faith in Jesus, he brings forgiveness and the Holy Spirit into our lives, and he brings a new nature into our life, and that is the nature of God himself, who he has called us to be. Transformation, our change, it happens from the inside out. We are not changed by trying to be good, by our tremendous willpower, our own power to overcome sin. No, transformation happens from the inside out. And the transformation agent, the one who makes the change in our lives, is the Holy Spirit himself. There, this word metamorphomai is only used a few times in the New Testament. And I want to share with you two verses where that word is found, and it refers to our own transformation. The first verse that I want to share with you is found in 2 Corinthians 3.18. And it says this, the Apostle Paul is speaking to the Corinthian people. And he says, and we all, who with unveiled faces contemplate the, the Lord's glory, or another way of saying that we reflect the Lord's glory. And we are being transformed, and that comes, that word metamorphomai, we are being transformed into his image with increasing glory, which comes from the Lord, who is the Spirit. We are being transformed into his likeness. 
we are being changed by the glory of God that dwells within us in that new nature that is found in Christ Jesus. And we are changed with ever increasing glory. What that means is that we are being changed little by little, step by step. God is changing us into the people he wants us to be. I heard someone say many years ago that our goal, really, our goal as Christian is not to get to heaven because that is already a promise that has been given to us by our faith in Jesus Christ. Our goal as Christians is to become more like Christ. Our transformation is to become more like Christ. And that, my friends, is a lifelong process. We all are being changed from glory to glory, step by step. It doesn't happen all at once. It takes time. It even takes some pain at times in order to be transformed into who God wants us to be this side of heaven. And it's a lifelong process of being changed by the power of the Holy Spirit. And as I said, sometimes change can be painful. But the entire process that God allows us to go through, even when it's painful, produces a new strength in us. I'd like to read you a real short story that I had read uh, many years ago, and I kept it on hand. It was a story of a man and a cocoon that he had found. It says that once a man found the cocoon of a butterfly. He kept it for a while and watched it. Eventually, he noticed an opening in the cocoon and he watched how the butterfly struggled to come out of the opening. After a while, it seemed that the butterfly had stopped its efforts and just sat there doing nothing. The man decided that he was going to help the butterfly, and he took a small pair of scissors and cut the remaining bit of cocoon so that the butterfly could come out easily. That was a big mistake. After cutting the cocoon, he was expecting that the butterfly would come out any moment with its enlarged wings and begin to fly. He was watching the whole thing with great concentration, but nothing like that happened. In fact, what happened was horrible. The butterfly could never open its wings. It spent its time crawling around with shriveled wings and a swollen body. The man was trying to help the butterfly, but was actually hurting it. By struggling out of the hole, the butterfly was actually releasing fluid into the wings but the man, by cutting the cocoon, stopped that whole process. Change, my friends. Strain, my friends. Part of our transformation process of becoming more like Christ sometimes can become painful. But we keep pressing on with the power of the Holy Spirit who is in within us so that we can be transformed into the beautiful creation God has called us to be. Some things we just have to go through. It's part of our transformation process, and we are changed from the inside out. The Holy Spirit 
will always be working in our lives. And you may look at me and you may not see a new creation. You may not see a beautiful butterfly at times. But there is a cocoon, there is a process taking place within my life as I submit myself to the Lord, and he is changing me. He is putting me through some processes so that I can become more like him. The other place where we find transformation is in Romans 12, verse 2. And it says this, do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. Be transformed, we are told, we are transformed by the renewing of our mind. That's that same word, metamorphomai. We are not changed by conforming to what is happening around us. It says, do not conform to the pattern of the world. We don't change into who God wants us to be, into stronger witnesses for Jesus, people who show the fruit of the Spirit, we are not changed by peer pressure. So just don't go along. Don't go along with popular opinion. Our transformation as Christians happens when we, it begins by renewing our minds. Our transformation begins by the renewing of our minds. In other words, we need to change the way we think. And we need our way of thinking to come in line with God's way of thinking. And that's why we go to the Word of God. I don't know about you, but there are still times and ways in my life where I need to change the way I think. I may not be always a good reflection of Jesus Christ. But God sees me for who I can become, not just who I am. Others may look at me and they may just see a cocoon. A cocoon is not all that appealing. But I am still in the process of becoming more and more like Jesus. There's a metamorphosis going on in my life. But it's only done with the power of Christ himself. As I looked at this text and I looked at this word, I have asked the Lord, Lord, transform me, transform me. I think we all need, we all know that we need changing. I think that's part of maturity is not that you come to a place where you think you have arrived by no means but when you continue to recognize your need to change that's when you are giving god permission to work in your life when you look back over the past 12 months wow god has been changing us He's taken a virus that has affected the entire world and it's closed things down and it has separated people. But in some ways, he's bringing us closer together. His real church is being brought close together by the power of the Holy Spirit. Through the racial tensions, uh, tensions that are out there still, God is causing us and helping us to think differently through the whole election turmoil. I have learned this more than ever. My hope is not in Washington, D.C. My hope is in Jesus Christ. Sometimes our prayers, we ask God for change. 
But sometimes we're praying the wrong prayer. We are praying rather than change the circumstances around us. Lord, change me. Change me. You know what? A, and again, we all recognize that we need to change. But I ask myself, you know, what are some signs that we can really recognize clearly that we, we are to change? Because we're all imperfect people. What are some signs that we need to change when our hearts are continuously hard? We need to change. When our love towards other people is continuously cold, we need to change. When we are continuously complaining or continuously afraid, we need to change. And God wants us to change. I can't change myself. But God himself in his Holy Spirit lives within my life and he wants me to change. So I challenge you this morning. Ask God. Say, Lord, I help me to change into who you want me to be. But I... I be careful, because, because God just may give you, give you what you ask. If you want to change, God wants you to change, but he may not do it in the way you expect. Change comes when we can embrace Jesus as the one who is going to change my life. It's not the mountaintop experiences. It's not great preachers. It's not great people that are going to bring about change. It's Jesus and Jesus alone. I want to share with you in closing that at near the end of our gospel reading this morning, um, it says that uh, in verse 8 of chapter 9 in Mark, it says, suddenly, when they looked around, after Peter, James, and John had heard God speak, after they had seen Jesus transformed and transfigured on the mountain with Moses and Elijah, and after the, all of these overwhelming things, it says, suddenly, when they looked around, they no longer saw anyone with them except Jesus. When you get to that point in your life, when you're left with nobody but Jesus, that is the place of transformation. Let's pray. Father, thank you for loving us. Thank you for the new nature that we have that you have given to us by grace. But Lord, it's hard to change. But we ask you to help us. Help us change. Help us to become more like you. Help us to reflect you and not ourselves. So we come to you and we ask that you, through the power of your Holy Spirit, continue that transformation process in each of us. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.